and I will just have a few uh, more minutes to ask to ask some questions to Alex, who's also mentioned in uh, this book. This is very important as well for us Maltese to to uh, know about endeavors that. Uh, uh, other Maltese people are doing around the world. Okay, yeah. I've been. I've been uh -huh. Yeah, yes. there's another individual involved in this project, and I think it's only fair to mention him. Yes, of course. Because he's a source of inspiration to me. Is Ralph Portijic, okay. who was born in Australia. His parents are both from Hazabar. All right, and, and he's that also was another reason that I got involved in this project because the mere fact that another individual of Maltese descent is involved in this project. Okay, that's great. And I've known Ralph for several years by reputation because I've always used to see his name coming up on the internet uh -huh. in various forums devoted to space exploration and space colonization. In fact, this is what we're talking about here. There are people with this type of interests who um, are getting together and, and exploring what other people are doing around the world. That's how you came across the underwater colonies. In fact, I've been having a few questions here in the meantime, during the break. It's like, and people are curious, like, how can it be? How can people live down there? Is it going to be a self-sustaining environment? Um, will people come up and down as they please? H how is, how is okay. all this going to happen? Permanence doesn't mean that we cut ourselves off from the land completely. I mean, my permanent address is in Asha, but I do venture out of Halasha in order to live and work, and I do go abroad every now and then. Permanence means that one of our permanent address will be underneath the sea. We'll be living and working in the sea, but we won't be cut off completely from the earth itself. But self-sustainability means that we will get all res resources from the sea itself. Um, and we will have a closed cycle bioregenerative system. We want to produce zero waste. There's no such thing as waste. Everything we conceive of as waste is a resource, a recoverable resource. You know, if we have even, even on our planet, we have a close symbiosis with the rest of the environment. Yes. I mean, we breathe out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is taken by the plants and they breathe out oxygen. Well, on a similar scale, we'll be doing that in our undersea colony. One of the major uh, spin-offs of space exploration and colonization has been the development of life support systems, which are bioregenerative. And in April 2007, this was actually tested by an individual from Australia by the name of Lloyd Godson, who's part of the team now. He spent two weeks under the sea mm -hmm. in a what he called biosub, which was a closed container, and okay. spent two weeks relying heavily on this bioregenerative system. Exactly. So obviously you're breathing out, you're breathing in, you're breathing out. There's your own oxygen, which is in the meantime becoming toxic, right? Oh, well, the carbon dioxide is becoming toxic and the buildup of carbon dioxide could prove fatal. But the plants blue-green algae, to be very, very precise, are taking this carbon dioxide into the process of photosynthesis, producing glucose and oxygen as a byproduct. Now, these plants happen to be edible. They could be an added food supplement. Uh, but the ocean itself provides a great deal of natural food resources. I mean, are we there are plants about fish and there are animals just, and okay. fish. The whole idea, though, is that we should develop these resources, not to the point of collapse. Right now, one of the major problems facing us globally is that we're fishing to the point where these habitats are collapsing. We want to develop the environment and sustain that environment to the point where it could regenerate itself. We will engage in aquaculture. We'll engage in developing oceanic renewable energy resources like wave energy. The ocean currents itself will provide electricity. Okay. Uh, you can have a generator close to the Gulf Stream with a turbine. As the current is going through, that will generate tremendous amounts of electricity. Oceanic differences, there's a new energy source called OTEC, mm -hmm. where we uh, employ the temperature differences in the ocean uh, to generate electricity. Okay. So from what I'm hearing, this is truly a, a well-researched and studied uh, subject in all levels Our divine in good faith yes. to Our the world, to yeah. the human population. Look, our design philosophy is rooted in environmentalism. We were inspired by the legendary Rachel Carson, who wrote Silent Spring and Oceans Around Us. Our survival, and I think the survival of the human species as a whole, depends on this new environmental philosophy. Okay. Where the environment comes first, yes, we will take what we need from the environment, but we have to give something back. 
and that means caring for our planet. Yes. I think if we don't, we'll be guilty of a temporal form of imperialism. You know, we live on this planet only for a short span of time, each and every individual here. Yes, that's true. Um, I think what legacy we leave behind is going to be very important to us. Mm -hmm. And that legacy means that we want to leave a planet which is habitable for future generations. Without being of impact to the ocean. Mm, we don't want to destroy the ocean, so we want to no. use the oceans, we want to, to utilize the oceans but not exploit them.